Hey guys, it's Dawn, and today I wanted to share this technique with you. I learned this from Jennifer McGuire, and it's one of those that makes you just go, wow, how'd they do that? But it's really not that difficult. It's a little tedious, but it's not hard at all. So here I've made a template first, and I did that using the exact same technique that I'm about to show you here. The reason I created a template was because I knew I wanted to be able to create this card multiple times, and having this template to help me line it up means that I don't have to uh, go from square one over and over again. So I've created the template and I'm just going to adhere it down over my uh, base with a little bit of washi tape and we're going to be using the whole lot of happy balloon dies. So here we're going to place our foreground balloon first. Any item you want to be on top you're going to cut that first. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through my die cut machine and then I'm going to remove the resulting die and I'm going to lay that off to the side because I'm going to need it. I'm going to reinsert it back into the negative space once we're all done. So I'll use my piercing tool to uh, release that if you need to. And then we're going to take that and we're going to line it up using our template over top of the part we just die cut. You can use a little washi tape to hold it in place if you need to. Um, I find sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I don't want it to shift around. so. I'm taping here. <laughs> Murphy's Law is it'll come out jacked up if I don't. <laughs> now when you're die cutting half on and half off of the cardstock like this, you may find that your die gets stuck in your cutting plate. I just use the tip of my piercing tool to help pry that up and it comes up no problem. So now we're going to place the next one and we're going to continue this same method lining it up against our template for all of our balloons. And remember to keep all of your pieces, your resulting die cuts, because we're going to need these to fit them back in, kind of like a puzzle. Now we just remove our template, and we have the perfect base to fit all of our balloons back into. For the sentiment, I'm going to be heat embossing it on a banner here. I'm using our basic banners die, and I'm cutting it out of our Lake House cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all my die cutting out of the way so I can move on to the next phase of the card. To create the background, I'm using masking and sponging. So I've taken these dies from our Hearts and Clouds die and die cut the clouds from post-it notes. Now they have masking paper for this and it would probably work better because it would have more even coverage with the adhesive on the back and it would probably stay down better when you're going over it with the sponge. But in a pinch I find post-it notes and some removable adhesive work just fine. I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Broken China along with a blending tool. I'm going to load up the sponge with the ink and then I'm going to start on my craft mat, I'm going to swirl into my card base here, my panel, and this will keep me from adding too much ink at once that I can't blend out onto the card base. I'm not perfect at this technique, but um, I get by. <laughs> Sometimes I still end up with the little splotches on my card, but hey, it's handmade, whatever. So I'm going to keep adding this color until I get it uh, about where I want it. I'm concentrating on the top half and having it fade into the bottom. And when I remove those masks, you can see the area underneath the mask has stayed crisp white and then we have that soft haze of blue all around them. Now it's time to decorate those balloons. So for that I've taken a strip of cardstock and I'm adding some removable adhesive to it. This will hold my balloons in place while I do my heat embossing and my sponging of color. Just going to stick all of these down and then that way I can stamp them all at once. For this I'm using our Borders and Backgrounds 3 stamp set and this has this grouping of star confetti on it and I thought it'd be great to add this star pattern to the balloons. So I'm just going to stamp this down in a couple places using the Versamark ink and then I'm going to come in with the Wow Bright White Embossing Powder and emboss it. This is a great method when you have a lot of little pieces that you want to repeat the same process to over and over. Just line them all up and do them all at once. To color in the balloons, I'm using a sponge applicator and our new Pure Color dye inks, and we'll be releasing these in March. We're starting out with 10 colors, and then we'll be releasing another five directly after that. Now, I could have cut these out of cardstock and then heat embossed them in white, but I like the softer, almost transparent look that coloring them with ink gives you. Plus, you can control how uh, soft or deep you want the color to be. I've colored two of the blooms with our wild mango and now I'm moving on to our bloomsberry. This is a beautiful purple color with just a hint of pink. So I really, really like this color and I didn't have anything like it already in my stash. The next color we're using is our sweet nectar and this is a gorgeous coral color. Now these will go on quite saturated but as they dry they'll lighten up. Finally, I am using our lake house. 
again, this is going to go on quite dark, but it'll dry about a shade or two lighter than this. And I just love these colors together. Now that we've got all of our pieces, it's time to put them all in place. So I've taken a scrap piece of cardstock here and I'm covering the whole thing with adhesive. Now you could do this directly on your card base, but if you wanted to pop this up on foam tape, then this is going to be the best method. This is going to give me a nice window of adhesive behind that negative space where we die cut all the balloons out. And this is what's going to hold all of our pieces in place as we put together our puzzle. Because of the way we die cut these, they're all going to fit together perfectly. And I really love this technique and I'm so glad that Jennifer McGuire shared it. I have tons of other dies and images that I can't wait to try this with. I like the dimension and the interest that it adds to a card without adding any bulk whatsoever. So it's still extremely post friendly. For the string, I'm using the image included in the whole lot of happy stamp set and I'm applying it to my block in a curve. This way I can stamp it one way and then flip the block and stamp it the other way and none of my strings will look identical and I'll be able to put a little bit of movement into them. I'm stamping these in our silver lining dye ink and since I have six balloons, I'm going to make sure that I add six strings. I'm going to be embossing the sentiment on a banner die cut, so I'm rubbing it down with an embossing buddy before stamping it with Versamark ink. The sentiment is also included in Whole Lot of Happy. I'm going to add some WOW embossing powder. And if any sticks where you don't want it to, you can just use a small brush to brush that away. And then I'm going to emboss it. Now we just have to put it all together. So I've got a white card base here and it measures four inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And I've added foam tape to the back of my panel here as well as the back of the banner. I'm just gonna center that panel on the card base and then add my banner to the front and that will finish up this card. So I hope you enjoyed today's card. It's a fun technique that looks really difficult but just requires a little patience. Stop by the blog for more photos and full information on this card. You can find the featured W Plus 9 products at wplus9.com and you can connect with us on our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Thanks for watching. See you next time.